Hey, I think we're live. This is Burt Middleton, the gout killer. Kind of looking like uh, Casper, the friendly ghost here in my new office. So um, let me just turn one thing off here and then I think we're good to go. So thank you all for being on this Google Hangout and doing something about getting rid of your gear it stays away so I really appreciate um, your interest and your determination and your commitment and your diligence to your own good health and killing your gout so <laughs> I uh, I just wanted to do these Google Hangouts to continue the conversation put more information out there and um, Unfortunately, I still am a Google Hangout neophyte, so figuring out how to be able to um, get questions and be able to answer them to that apologize. But to begin with, the the whole uh, the, the 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 whole reason for this Google Hangout today is do parasites cause gout and so you know that is something that is pretty out of the ordinary when it comes to gout most people don't really think about that and that's sort of why I wanted to bring it up again I wrote a blog post about it that if you did use the little search function on the gum and just typed in parasites you'll find that blog post I did it a long time ago and I've been you know I, I post every once in a while I'll out it because it's something that we don't really think that much about and there are uh, a couple of re reasons why I to think about in relationship to gout and uh, to begin with the parasites we, we, we all have parasites <laughs> let me just jump into this thing <laughs> we all have parasites you me everybody else it's kind of an interesting thing sometimes people talk about how um, you know you really shouldn't sleep with your pets because you know your pets have parasites and then you can get parasites from your pets and evidently it's sort of like the other way around sometimes your parasites get I mean sometimes your your pets get parasites from so the, the way that this all fits together is well, let me start here we bring in the outside world in many different ways one of them is the way we breathe and stuff going through our skin but the main way we bring in uh, stuff into our inner environment is through our mouth through what we drink and what we eat and everything that we eat and drink has bacteria all over it and some of that bacteria is bad um, some of the bacteria that is growing in our gastrointestinal system especially in our small intestine and even more particularly our large intestine then that bacteria is the good bacteria that we want to foster and grow because it's part of the way that we synthesize vitamins break down foods it's part of the way that and then they are the right size and um, the, the right nutrients to be able to then enter the blood and enter the lymph and then move throughout the rest of our body and feed our cells. So what ends up happening is when we bring in food and it's full of bacteria, it's full of yeast, fungus, um, parasites, then the job of our stomach to begin with is to create a very acidic environment with hydrochloric acid with with stomach acid now are not having good hydrochloric acid or stomach acid expression in or production um, one of the jobs of that that stomach acid is to disinfect the food that we eat it's it it's very acidic in bacteria to deal with those kind of parasites and to deal with so many other things before it's all digested properly as into the small intestine where it then becomes absorbed and used but with the whole idea there are two parts to this whole parasite thing number one is that the parasites they are living in us and in some cases they are they are eating the food that 
we've eaten from this good food, and now the parasites are eating that good food. What's even worse, though, is some of those parasites, and there are hundreds, probably thousands of different kinds of parasites, they actually feed on our tissues. And so one of the things that you got to think about is that it's a living organism. And that living organism is eating the food or it's eating us. And when it eats us, then it digests us and then it poops and it pees. And just like when we poop and pee and poop can be very, very acid forming. So that's, you know, just the very waste that comes off of those parasites adds to our acidic load in one way or another. The other thing that ends up happening is that those parasites, and, and I learned all this, um, you, you might have a better understanding of parasites than I do. I hope you do, but I'm giving you the, the 30,000 foot overview of what I've come to understand about this. Now, the other part of that whole parasite thing is that these are living organisms and they are continually multiplying, but some of them are dying. And so now we've got, you know, I'm going to make this a little bit graphic for you. Now we've got dead parasite carcasses in our environment, and that becomes part of what we have to digest and what has to be taken care of by our gastrointestinal system. Okay, that's the first whole half of that. The whole, um, the whole side of the parasite thing that, um, that adds to the uh, acidic load that is in our bodies. So the other half is that, um, as far as parasites go, are cause our ability to properly digest our food and break it down, be absorbed, be assimilated, and then be carried out through the rest of our body to feed the cells, you know, from the tip of our toenails to the top of our hair, no hair on this head, but um, the, the way that our digestive system. And so uh, I just did a, a, a my gout phone call that I call Let's Talk Gout a couple hours ago and we were talking about apple cider, the need to improve the way that we break down our foods. And specifically, we need to bre um, be breaking down on our proteins, um, we, we, need, we need to make sure that we're breaking down our proteins properly. Um, just to go through that real quickly, it's like we, if you have gout, you probably know this, um, proteins are where a lot are very purine rich and when the purines get broken down, the best, just for the record, uric acid is not a bad thing. Uric acid, as long as it stays in solution in the blood, then it is a very powerful and necessary antioxidant. Now, it's the kidney's job to monitor how much to keep and how much uric acid to let go, kind of like on a on a moment to moment basis. So, if we're not breaking down our on for the kidneys, like foot overview. So there is that meth, and especially our protein only creates problems later. The way on in our whole gastrointestinal system and skinning in the stomach. So I hope that that has been that 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 brings a little bit of clarity to the idea of. There are a, a lot of different things that um, add to why we do or why we don't get gout, but um, not specifically like parasites are the cause of gout. Like they're all too often it is, um, we talk about all these things that are causes of gout. Alcohol causes gout. Foods cause gout. Well, not that's not exactly correct. It's like the foods, the alcohol, the parasites, the, the 
heavy metal poisoning, um, sleep apnea, and the low blood oxygen saturation. There, there are a number of different things that contribute to having the kind of inner environment that then make it conducive for gout to become uh, an out of control condition. So it's not like parasites are the cause of gout. You know, don't go saying something like, you know, the gout killer said, you know, parasites are the cause of gout. Um, they are a contributor to the cause of gout. What I have found is that the cause of gout is, first of all, it can exacerbate that, can add to that, and then it's diminishing poor kidney function. You know, your kidneys once worked well, then you started getting gout, and then now you get gout all the time. And that's because your kidneys are not working as well as they once did. So I hope that's helpful. <laughs> I hope that uh, that sheds a little bit more light on yet one more thing to be aware of and the way to look at this whole gout situation so that you can make the right choices, so that you can move in the right direction, um, you can do the right things for your body. Um, one of the first things is breathing fully, deeply, and completely, sitting up straight, set your computer up so that your, <laughs> that your monitor is up high so you have to look up a little bit bit so you sit up straight like I'm doing right now is one thing good hydration is a really important thing for the intestinal and flushing out removing bacteria fungus yeast parasites all that kind of thing and just making the right choices of food not eating those processed foods making your own food at home, going out, buying it, preparing it, having it ready. It doesn't have to be complicated, but we do, we do need to be eating really good food. So I hope that helps. And I really appreciate you being here. And uh, if you were here watching this live feed, thank you very much. And if you're watching now a replay, I appreciate you being here on The Gout Killer and um, getting yourself educated. So thank you. Bert Middleton, the gout killer.